Hello, it's Craig here from Wiki Video, where it is eternally sometime in the 80s, and of course, your local store for all the latest movies. Well, it's Friday night again, and the kids are sleeping out, I see. So you and your other half are having a takeout and want the movie. Something scary to snuggle up to, eh? Something scary, but fun. Hmm, it doesn't take itself too seriously. So, since it's the 80s and slashes are still all the rage, how about a revisit to a certain summer camp for yet more blood, guts, carnage and mayhem? Sound good? Okay, so relax, unwind, as long as you rewind, and let me take you back to Camp Blood as I give you five reasons why you should hire Friday the 13th Part 6, Jason Lives. Watch out, there may be spoilers. So Tommy Jarvis and his buddy visit a creepy cemetery during a thunderstorm where the body of Jason Voorhees lies. Hell bent on just ensuring Jason can never come back to get him, he digs up the worm infested corpse to perform a cremation but accidentally revives him. And when a freak thunderbolt strikes, Jason then rises to kill yet again. And this time he's a superhuman zombie and nobody can stop him. So here's my five reasons. Number five, the best one yet? Okay, so we're now six episodes in, and to be honest, they have been varying with quality. The first was a derivative Halloween clone that turned Psycho on its head with a crazy mother killing in the name of the long drowned son. With gross gory effects, it was a massive box office hit. Then Jason took centre stage in chapters two to five. He went from being a sackhead to a hokey mask wearing boogeyman. Some were good, some okay, but all were massively successful. So following the disappointing critical success to the previous entry, Friday the 13th A New Beginning, director Tom McLaughlin attempted to make Jason Lives more appealing to his fans by injecting some fun. This approach has been massively successful and has fast become my favourite chapter in the series. So the opening scene in the graveyard is pure hokey and cinematic and plays just like an updated version of something that the Hammer Studios would have done to resurrect Frankenstein. Number four, change of tone. So this new style is not only funnier, but it's also cleverer, and setting a new style that could possibly shape the future of the slasher film. It's self-referential and breaks the fourth wall to spoof the saga's recurring elements, and it was the perfect way to justify the confusing continuity and appease the longtime Friday fans. Hey, I'm over the moon Jason has finally cut a style for himself that can leave Michael Myers standing. Let's just hope it continues with this quality. Number three. Alice and Jason, a love story. Just like Bond had Shirley Bassey, Lulu and Duran Duran, Jason now seems to have artists lining up to sing the signature tune for each chapter. And with Jason Lives, we have Alice Cooper with The Man Behind the Mask. Just like the movie, Alice doesn't take himself too seriously, and we love him for that. The video for the song features teenagers being menaced by Jason during a late night showing of the movie. Hey, I wonder who'll be singing the next title track for the next chapter? Ozzy Osbourne? Elvira? Number two, the best final girl of the series? Again, just like Bond, Jason has had his string of leading ladies in each chapter, and this time we have the brilliant Megan, played by Jennifer Cook. Megan doesn't follow on the trope of the usual sweet final girl. 
she's actually quite badass. She's mischievous, plays tricks on the local law enforcers, has car chases, but totally steps in to protect the children and take on Jason in the film's final act. It's a great performance and she is clearly having a ball. And I recognise you, Jennifer Cook. You played Elizabeth the Star Child in the TV series V, didn't you? See? How many of you knew that? So we have a lively final girl, Alice Cooper's warbling, a self-referential shift in tone. And now, are you ready for my number one reason why you should hire this film tonight? Okay, here it goes. Number one, Jason, the undisputed king of the slashers. Since taking the reins from his mad, demented mother Pamela from the original movie, Jason has endured everything the studio's thrown at him. Sackheads, dodgy 3D, and then he was finally dispatched forever in chapter four. But, good box office never truly dies, and now in 1986, he's back and took centre stage as King of the Slashers. I mean, who is there to challenge him at the moment? Michael Myers has been replaced by Silver Shamrock. Leatherface, well, he's taken a wrong turn on the slasher roadmap. Freddy Krueger, maybe. Hmm. Hey, wouldn't it be cool if we had Freddy and Jason going head to head against each other? Isn't that a great idea? No? Sorry, I spoke. So, Friday the 13th, part six, Jason lives. Want it? I thought so. You probably only have to wait a year before the next installment. So that will be back by 10 a.m. tomorrow. Let me know if you enjoy it. Why not become a member of our video store by hitting the subscribe button and this will allow me to keep you posted of any new movies released in our store. As a prize member, I will always give you the first dibs on what is hot. So if you have any suggestions for any new movies or any old movies that we can stock on our shelves, why not let me know in the comments below. So until next time and don't forget, be a mate. Be sure you don't return at late. And be a friend. Rewind when you get to the end. See you later.